a lot of times in video game development, the final result is completely different than the concept and prototypes, and most of the times the art team works in a different pace than the programming team, so in order to test and troubleshoot the killer powers and see that they work well, the coding team applies them to a prototype work in progress design. And this is what the behavior team chose for Deathslinger, a trapper with a cowboy hat holding a rifle. Which brings an interesting topic in mind. What was the prototype work in progress look for all the killers in Dead by Daylight? Was the dredge just a black blob? The update that brought Deathslinger to Dead by Daylight is one of the most important ones to the game, as it introduced new concepts never seen before, like breakable walls. Dead Dog Saloon is considered by many as one of the best maps ever made, and I can agree with that since it's the map that changed and was the first on a lot of things. Dead Dog was the first map ever to have an actual backdrop beyond the walls, as the past maps all had the void and some trees at most. Dead Dog features a completely custom made canyon as well as a very nice looking dusk scene, and if you are interested on in seeing how it looks like explored, check out the exploration vid that I will leave at the end of the video. Dead Dog was the first map to also feature a completely personalized exit gate switch and exterior, as the closest one we had up to this point was Hawking's laboratory. The exit gates in Dead Dog look like a steampunk style switch and they also let out gas when you interact with them. Finally, as a fun fact about Dead Dog Saloon, did you know that the lightning on this map was very different from the end result. In the PTB and for some PCs, Dead Dog was a very dark map with an almost completely different lighting aspect to it, and you can see this lighting on the spotlight video for Deathslinger himself. The map is not the only thing very detailed in this update, as Deathslinger is one of the most detailed killers in the game, to the point it surprises me how much love they put in order to create this character. For example, most lore enthusiasts will know that Deathslinger, during the time he was alive, received an almost fatal shot that could have killed him, but instead it devastated his jaw, which is the reason he has an open mouth almost always during the lobby. This bullet is featured as one of his add-ons, and if you remove the facial hair of Deathslinger, you will see that his jawbone is exposed, which you can see on his double-crossed outfit, which, by the way, this outfit is inspired on a real-life western movie called Tombstone, as you can see by the similarities of this outfit to the ones that appear in the movie, as well as the collection name being called Tombstone. But anyways, going back to our bald head slinger here, another very cool detail we can see about him is that he has hanging marks all around his neck. This means that at some point in time, that slinger was going to be another victim of the gallows, but he didn't end up dying to it. What I find interesting is that there isn't any point in the lore of Deathslinger where it says he survived an attempt of this type of execution, only that he was convicted to it, but due to the survival of Bashir, he was instead sentenced to prison. And for those that don't care about the lore and don't know who Bashir is, Bashir is the sworn enemy to Deathslinger. He was the man that betrayed his trust and started to sell his inventions and patents to others, and Deathslinger hates him with all his soul. He hates Bashir so much that he has the motto Death to Bashir engraved in his custom made weapon, and this is the engravings that Deathslinger cleans after every basic attack in Dead by Daylight, to remind him constantly that his main goal is the death of Bashir. And since we started talking about his weapon, did you know that it has an actual brand in the game? The weapon that Deathslinger is using is a modified Toslin and Waste Model 48 according to the branding in their rifle. Now I am not a gun fanatic, but this is not a real weapon as far as I am aware, and if you know about guns, especially western ones, comment down below what you think this weapon is inspired by. This is not the only interesting fact about this branding, next to it, it has a serial number that says NO0614-2016, which might look like random numbers, but this is the release date of Dead by Daylight, June 14th, 2016, 
honestly one of my favorite details in DBD. But the engravings are not something exclusive to his default weapon. Some of the most expensive looking rifles that appear on the store also have their own name engraved on them, like the Rails Edge on the Rails Edge weapon, the Killjoy in the double crossed outfit and the Spirit of Belfast in the Frontier Vigilante. The rest of the weapons do not have any visible engravings on them, but as an extra fact, take a look at how cute they made the moth in Dead by Daylight. If you think this is the end of details in Dead Singer, then you are wrong. Another cool fact about him is that he has a leg brace due to an almost fatal wound that he received in one of his adventures, as it is said in his Frontier Vigilante outfit. The only outfit missing this leg brace is his Oxy Ponty outfit. This leg brace is the reason why Dead Singer walks slower than the normal speed killers, and he was the first male character to run at 110% instead of 115, if you don't count the original design of Frank and Joy. In his double crossed outfit, he has big nails stuck to his left leg, which is visible in game if you position your camera well. This is the only time you can see Dead Singer's legs. A really cool detail about his Frontier Vigilante outfit is that the spurs in his cowboy shoes actually have engravings on them, but they are low quality so I cannot read exactly what they say. But the fact that the artist decided to give Slinger so much detail to the point of putting engravings on his shoes, which most of the players will never get to appreciate, is really cool. I guess they wanted me to make a video about it. The double crossed outfit is my favorite outfit for Dead Singer, and this was not the only cool detail about it. Did you know that this outfit has wanted posters hanging around in his pants pocket? And did you know that these posters are about the Mason Kelly gang, which feature a $500 bounty for any man caught on them, dead or alive? Just as an extra history fun fact, $500 on those times would amount to $19,000 due to inflation, so that actually brings an interesting new point of view of Singer. If he had a different life and he could keep the prize money for himself, that Singer could have been one of the richest characters in the game. At the start of the video, I said that that Singer was one of the most detailed characters in Dead by Daylight, and if you still don't believe my words after all the cool details I showed already, then let me show you the definitive detail. Dead Slinger's underwear is actually custom made and not a simple template. As you can see, it has a rugged look to it with holes. The final detail that I wanted to talk about is that if you turn Dead Slinger in the lobby to look at you, you will notice that he has a twitch on his left eye. Behavior really decided to go all in on Dead Slinger. And that's not the only interesting thing about his eyes. If you notice, Dead Singer has white eyes on him, a feature that some other killers share, like Wraith, Spirit and Hillbilly. There is a theory in Dead by Daylight that says that any killer that has white eyes is due to the entity manipulating them into seeing things. And so for Dead Singer, he sees every survivor in the trial as one of his enemies in the past. And if you are interested on in this topic, make sure to let me know and I might do a video talking about this more in depth on the future. But anyways, if this theory is right, it explains why he finds joy in finding and hunting down those survivors. In fact, for Dead Singer, all of this is just sport, not something very out of the ordinary. But for survivors, this is absolutely scary. And this dynamic of hunter and prey can be heard directly on the chase music of that singer. If you notice, his terror radius music sounds very creepy and overall very jarring. But the moment you enter a chase with that singer, this fear and tension goes away and a banging, fast-paced tune starts playing. This is because the time of hiding is gone and now it's a game of cat and mouse. Since we talk so much about cool details, let's change subjects. Did you know that originally Dead Singer was supposed to be known as the Gunslinger according to an accidental leak of the lore before he was officially revealed 
where it called him the gunslinger. In fact, in one of his outfits, the fishy target, they refer to him as the gunslinger still. The cool thing about his outfits is that they all tell a cool canon story to that singer, unlike most of the other killers that have fantasy inspired outfits or they are all made up just to sell. The only outfits that are not canon to the lore of that singer is the Irish outfit from the Battle Pass and the Bugbeer outfit which showcases a moth infested, completely broken dead singer. As you can see here, he is pretty messed up on that outfit. Now I would like you to remember some of the facts I talked about in this video, keep them in mind, because I will be making a new episode of Mysteries of the Fog, featuring none other than dead singer himself. During my investigation for facts, I stumbled upon a mystery that needs to be resolved, so stay tuned and don't miss out on it. Meanwhile, check out my out of bounds exploration video to see how Dead Dog Saloon looks like from the outside. Thank you for watching.